Hello there everyone and welcome back to another video here on the Theme Park Jack YouTube channel. Now today we're carrying on with what I was doing the other week as well, where I'm going back and improving and going a lot more in depth with some of my roller coaster and theme park reviews. The other week we reviewed Taran, my favourite roller coaster in the world. Today we're reviewing my second favourite roller coaster, Triumph Overland. But before we get into today's video though, please be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more videos like this. And please do leave a like on this video as well. The links to my social pages, shop and website are in the description. But we're just going to get straight into it. Okay then, so first things first, we're going to go through a POV of the ride. We're going to go through the whole layout and talk about the bits that I like and don't like. And um, I do just also want to point out that if you want to see a normal POV from Troy, um, where obviously the volume's on as normal, then I'll leave a link to that in the description because I filmed one and that is on YouTube, so you can go and watch that if you'd like. So yeah, the lift hill that we're going up now is 104.5 feet tall. And we're about to go down a drop that's 101 foot tall. So by today's standards, this is a really big roller coaster. We're now cresting over the lift hill and obviously from the front you're getting all the good views. But from the back you do get really whipped over this and you get some air time. Crazy sideways air time really. This point is built up its 54 mile an hour maximum speed, goes into a crazy overbank turn before a kind of bank turn top hat element that it kind of juts out and then goes back in, meaning you really get lobbed out of your seat. You wouldn't expect that to be a big airtime moment, but it really is. And then you go into an ejector airtime speed hill after that, and that is probably the strongest airtime moment in the ride in my opinion. The helix that we're about to go into now gives the best lateral forces on the ride and as you might know GCI is really known for giving good lateral forces before another ejector airtime speed hill and then a floater airtime hill that's more common to something you might find on a hyper coaster. It still gives good airtime but just not as strong as the other moments but that's okay it's good to have a bit of variation in the ride you won't want it to all be the same. I love that they got a station flyby incorporated into the ride and for the people watching in the station, it is really exciting for them. But when you're riding as well, it's a great head chopper moment. It's almost acts as a tunnel on the ride. And as well, you feel a lot faster than you are when you're actually going through that. So it really ups the excitement again towards the second half of the ride. The drop off the station fly through is another great ejector moment, especially if you're in the back. And it then goes through a couple of crazy wave turns that just give you not really much air time to be honest with the way they're profiled but just some nice lateral forces again it's just kind of weaving its way back towards another helix where you have your on ride photo taken and then it goes up into the brakes that last little part of the ride i won't say is the most exciting or has that much going on to be honest but it's just working its way back round to the station from where it was so that's okay it's not like this ride goes on forever after it really starts to slow down and gets boring, not at all. It's just a couple of turns before it goes into the station that I wouldn't say a week, it's still good fun because you're still going at quite a lot of speed at that point, but they're just nothing to write home about. And if it was just them on the ride, then it wouldn't really be anything special if that makes sense. The brake run is actually quite long and the run back into the station and it gives you a great chance to reflect on those two minutes of ride time that you've just had. Believe you me, everyone loves it. Troy is an amazing coaster and if you get a chance to go on it, which hopefully you will because you really do need to, then you will absolutely love that ride. It's amazing and it's my second favourite roller coaster in the world, without a doubt. The ride does get really busy as the day goes on, which is fine. It's understandable because the ride is just so popular. Um, it's the biggest ride there. It's, as soon as you turn into the car park, it's the big first ride that you see looks absolutely ginormous and it is really compared to the size of wooden roller coasters that are getting built nowadays but yeah everyone loves that ride you will too and it's definitely the best roller coaster at Toverland without a shadow of a doubt. Troy is located in a section of Toverland called Ithaca the theming of it is actually really good now before the ride just had a cattle pen queue line with no theming at all that's now been changed and they've landscaped it round there and they have now routed the queue line around just some general walkways and pathways that they had there before 
that's now been taken over by the queue line so the theming of it now is actually really good there's lots of good landscaping around there and theming as well and i think it does actually look really beautiful on the outside of the ride when you're on the ride itself there isn't very much theming but i'll be honest i don't think anyone cares there's that much going on that it really isn't the end of the world but in terms of the actual theming itself off the ride it's very good okay then so just some of my final thoughts now to wrap up today's review i think as you've probably heard so far that this is a brilliant wooden coaster it is some of gci's best work in my opinion i think the ride has been um, made very well the layout to it is great obviously this can't be a terrain coaster because it's in the netherlands and it's so ridiculously flat over there so they physically couldn't make it a terrain coaster because they've pretty much got no terrain to work with at all but no though it's been so well built this ride um, it really makes the most of the speed it's got and does some really crazy elements low to the ground it's got some great ejector airtime on it which is probably my favorite element of all on a ride getting thrown out of your seat is brilliant there's some great ejector airtime moments on there from the front and back it's not one of these coasters that you just have to sit in the back to get airtime you get it wherever you sit on the ride but i would say that obviously towards the back it is going to be stronger the lateral forces on the helix on the ride are really good just before you go into another ejector hill that is absolutely awesome um, lateral forces on there and you really will get shoved into the side of the train the station fly through is brilliant you really pick up some speed there and get another great airtime moment as you're coming out of that and you know what there isn't a dull spot on the whole ride it's absolutely fantastic my favorite roller coaster in the netherlands my second favorite roller coaster in the world will it still be my favorite coaster in the netherlands when i ride untamed at wallaby holland i'm not so sure it might be it might not be um but all i will know that even if i prefer untamed to this when i go on that i will still absolutely love this ride it's so well maintained by toverland it's smooth it's fast it's enjoyable anyone can go on it i think as long as you brace yourself anyone should be able to enjoy this ride and it is just a brilliant coaster thank you very much for watching today's video i've left the links to my social pages shop and website in the description please be sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on this video as well your support is much appreciated and i'll see you in my next video coming on the channel very soon thanks for watching guys bye now